In this installment of Fly the Pterodactyl, we examine the most critical variation, which is the one that is recommended by most authorities as the proper way to handle the opening as white. We will be looking at the game Van Oosterum versus Alvis uh, from a game played in Vienna in 2011 showing a new idea for black which I believe rehabilitates a line which has been dismissed by many of the authorities. Um, this is in the most critical variation that begins e4, g6, d4, bishop g7, knight c3, c5, where white captures on c5, which is the generally recommended move. Now, instead of the immediate pterodactyl move, queen a5, I think the correct way to play for black is to capture the knight on c3, and then play queen a5, recovering a pawn unless white chooses to defend both pawns with queen d4, which is again the recommended move. Now the rook is attacked, so we play knight f6, and planning to play knight c6 to cause some discomfort to the white queen. But here, white can offer a trade of queens right away with queen b4. Again, this is the recommended move. Now, black, of course, should not oblige because an exchange would give white an extra pawn in the end game, and white's pawn structure would be somewhat repaired. Instead, the queen retreats to c7 and will pick off the weak pawns later. Now, the idea proposed and recommended by Greet in his book on handling unorthodox replies to e4 is bishop b5. The idea being that if the knight comes to c6, white can just chop it off and uh, have a good game. But again, we don't oblige. We simply castle. And now, in this game, white played knight e2, the recommended move, and knight c6, and trading, and now f3. Now white has shored up his center, and though he still suffers from the weak tripled pawns, uh, his position otherwise is quite reasonable. The correct way to play for black here is to forget about being a pawn down and just play b6, allowing white to capture, but then instead of recapturing, black plays bishop a6. And now the question is, what should white do? In the game, white captures at a7, and we'll look at that in a moment, but um, working with the computer uh, analysis, we see that knight d4 looks like a better move first. Um, but in this case, I think that you just take the pawn. And now white still has an extra pawn, but it's a completely useless extra pawn, uh, given the doubled weak pawns on the queen side. And I think black can be quite happy with the game. So instead, we look at the, the what was played in the game, which is bishop t uh, b takes a7, and uh, rook takes... And now, king f2, if the knight comes to d4, the queen would just go back to c7 with an equal position. And here, uh, they trade the bishop for the knight. And the very active move, rook a4, which gives an initiative, which is compensation for the two pawns. Because even though white has two extra pawns, all of white's queenside pawns are very weak and black's pieces are moving into position quite rapidly in a somewhat benko gambitish kind of idea of using the rooks and queen on the queen side on open files to compensate for missing pawns. So white dropped the queen back, and now 
Black just forced a draw. The knight takes e4. Check. There really isn't anything that white can do here except repeat the position with a draw. And so black has no problems in this particular variation, which is the one that is so strongly recommended for white. I think that this very important, if somewhat obscure game, uh, rehabilitates this variation for black and that you can play it with confidence. So look forward to future installments of Fly the Pterodactyl and don't forget to pick up a copy of my new book, Fly the Pterodactyl, from Ishii Press, published in April of 2012.